You get me. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Larry O. Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to do drum buses and melody buses in FL Studio in the mixer. Before we get into that, I want to give a huge shout out to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Let's hop right into a quick little tutorial. You get me. Real quick, I want to talk about Hyperfollow by DistroKid. Hyperfollow is a completely free and awesomely powerful promotional tool for anyone using DistroKid. It's the one-stop shop for all the links to streaming services and stores for your DistroKid release. Today, it's really a must-have one link that leads to your music and all streaming services. The instant you finish uploading at DistroKid, you can start marketing your release and collecting pre-saves on Spotify, including fan email addresses with Hyperfollow. You can also customize your Hyperfollow page to include your social media pages. As soon as your release goes live on its release date, your Hyperfollow page will automatically update to include your links to all the streaming services and the stores. You're able to edit your Hyperfollow page to include links to Bandcamp, videos, etc. Your Hyperfollow link never changes, and you'll never have to update your marketing copy or social media posts. You can find your Hyperfollow link on your DistroKid album page. This is a simple tool that all artists should be using. Now let's get back to the video. Alright, so I have this beat that I made. Um, yesterday or the day before I believe we can listen to it real quick and then I'm going to show you how to make melody buses and drum buses and why you should make those. I already have all of my instruments sent to the mixer each individual instrument is sent to its own mixer track so that's one of the most important things double check if you don't know if you have all of your instruments sent to the mixer you can choose all on this little tab right here and if anything in here doesn't have a number assigned to it that means that it's not sent to your mixer and you need to send it to the mixer you can either just scroll up or down right here and send it to a certain mixer track but that doesn't name it right away what i like to do is go to the instrument bring up this little tab and hit this little track button right here. When you hit that track button, it's gonna name it in the mixer. First, I'll create a melody bus, and it doesn't matter what track you use as long as it's an empty track in the mixer. So here, track number 24, and let's rename it melody bus. You can color it coordinated if you want. Hit enter, and I like to dock them to the left. These four tracks right here are all of my melody. You can do a couple different things to highlight all of these at one time. You can hold the control key down or command and click and drag, or you could just double left click really quick and drag, and then you can go over to the melody bus route to this track only now when you hit play you'll see that they're being routed to the 24 track one of the main purposes that i use this for is to just get a little bit of a tighter mix most of the time other times i use it if i want to put an effect on just the melodies or just the drums right say if i want some sort of a filter effect or if i want some certain eq that just kind of blankets over all of those melodies or all of those drums this helps with that so let's say you know those melodies all together they sound like they need a little bit of low end taken out of them the easiest and quickest thing is you could just put one eq on that melody bus and affect all of the melodies so let's just do that eq on the melody bus and let's say you know because we want to save room in that low end for the sub and for the 808 so why do we need any of those frequencies at all we know that we're not going to need anything from zero to at least around 90 to 100 hertz also if you want to glue your melodies together just a little bit more you can throw a compressor on that bus as well and another thing that i like to do on that melody bus is just give it a little bit of stereo separation so let's just go ahead and make a drum bus now i'm just going to find all of my drums which is pretty much from here all the way to the end. Let's just create a drum bus, another empty track. And I think from about track number eight to 19 can go in there. Route to this track only. When you hit route to this track only, none of those individual tracks are going to the master channel first. They're going to your bus first, and then your bus is going into the master channel, if that makes sense. And again, we can put a compressor on those drums to kind of glue them together, make them sound more like they're, you know, a drum kit being played. What I'm going to do is just basically take that SSL compressor, almost the same settings, and just drag it over. So by doing that, you can hit save, preset as, click and drag it onto the drum bus. It 
it's hitting the uh, compressor too hard. So what I want to do here is just maybe highlight all these drums and just bring the volumes down on those as a whole. So that way before they get to the drum bus, they're not hitting too high of a level. So when they hit the compressor, they're not being compressed too much. And then if you need to do any additional leveling after that, once we listen uh, to the melodies and the drums together, we can do so very easily because again, we have these drum buses set up. Let's just listen to the melodies and the drums together to see if we have to level anything else out. I'm gonna come down on the melodies just a little bit. Sounds nice. And I'm gonna show you another really cool reason for having this drum bus. Let's say if we wanted to filter, like earlier I was talking about maybe if you wanted to throw a filter, some sort of automation, and we want it on just the drums. It's it's hard to do that unless you have a drum bus set up because you would have to do it to each individual instrument or you would have to print all of those drums out to one audio file. This makes it a lot easier if you wanna do that in real time with some automation. So let's just listen to the drums. So let's say we want some sort of a low pass or high pass filter automation on there. Let's just throw the normal EQ2. Let's create you know, some sort of mid crazy weird filter drums. Now you can hear obviously that's on the entire drum section. So what we can do is just right click this knob on the parametric EQ2, create an automation clip. And now it's going to affect all of the drums um, only when we have this automation on. So you don't have to go and print any other drums. It's a very simple automation, especially if you want to keep things quick. You want to keep your workflow fast paced. I think this is one of the fastest ways to do this. Let's turn it off. And I'm probably not going to keep this here, but I just wanted to do it to show you guys. Let's uh, listen to that all together. Yeah, so that's gonna do it. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. And make sure if you wanna sign up for DistroKid, hit that link in the description. You get 7% off with my code and my link. With that being said, make sure you share this with a friend if you get me.